Hello, it's me again, der Bayer, and we are back in Beeman G for a test drive of the Grand Touring model of the Mark II. Both Mark I and Mark II are available for you to download in the Beeman G mod repository. So head over there if you want to try them yourself. From now on I will use a beam section at the beginning of each episode to talk a bit about the lore and the future strategy of the company. If you are interested, stay with me. If not, I mark the different chapters of the video in the timeline for easy navigation, so feel free to skip ahead. The Mark II design was quite well received with its mix of European and American design cues. It also continues to use some characteristic elements from the Mark I, like the grille or the ridges on bonnet and trunk lids, but it's quite a lot more boxy. Engine power has increased quite a bit as well, but still it is very much a cruiser and not a sports car. There have been some private entries of the Mark I in rally events though. They have not been successful because the car is sluggish, too large, too heavy and not reliable enough, but it was recognized by the company's management. Maybe a motorsports program would help to improve the reputation of building unreliable cars. So what a coincidence that the Gasmian Motorsports Association announced the Gasmian Touring Car Championship, with its first season to be started in 1963. It will be held according to Group 2 regulations, which will allow quite some modification to the cars. The cars need to be 4 seaters, which is not a problem. The main hurdle for Might Motors is a minimum production number of 1000 cars with the same body variant within 12 months, in order to be homologated for racing. Both the Mark 1 and Mark 2 cannot fulfill this requirement with the low production numbers. But the production cannot be scaled up easily without putting profitability at risk and the car is too heavy and sluggish anyway for racing, even though the engagement is not meant to be about showing maximum performance, but rather durability. Still, it would be good to not be the slowest car on the grid, and maybe it would also be good to be somewhat affordable for privateers to race. So the decision is made. A new model line will be introduced targeting less wealthy but still premium oriented demographics. The car should be a bit more simple, but still comfortable and prestigious, while having a sporty touch and it must be able to be produced in a high enough number within 12 months. Quite ambitious goals for a tiny manufacturer of luxury cars. But this is the goal for this episode, to introduce the new model and to target homologation for racing. The new model also means that the old, let's say, naming scheme of Mark 1, 2 and so on is no longer viable. So after endless discussions with the small marketing team, it was decided to name the new generation of cars after major rivers in the Great Lakes area of Kasmir. The new luxury model will be the Claris, the new premium model will be the Bramble, and we have two more names, Godwit and Avon, available for other models in the future. Oh, and by the way, let's say the company is located in Windley. Enough story time for now. It is time to test the company's cars and learn about potential improvements for the homologation model. So from now on I will test each new car on a hill climb stage and the automation test track. Again, if you would like to skip those, use the chapters in the timeline. Skill issues, or let's say outtakes, will be placed at the end of each episode. Because I know that's what you're waiting for, right? So let's get started.
So here we are again. And uh, yeah, last time I told you that we are doing so fine and our profits are excellent and I don't know where to spend my money basically, but it's not all that good actually, because I noticed we are selling off our old stock. And of course that contributes a lot to our profits. So if you say the prices are similar to the version two here, we are selling almost half of that off of stock and that's maybe not a good thing. We still should be profitable, but we'll see um, how, how good it actually is. So now let's focus on getting our plan into action. So we need to build a more mass market oriented model and we need to make sure that we can actually produce 1000 pieces a month and see if we can afford that. So far we have 30 million in the bank. Company valuation is actually lower than that, probably because we have still quite some loans. Let's take a look. Yeah, it's actually okay, 14 millions in loans. That's quite all right, I'd say. Let's get started and see if we can actually afford it and see if we can get it to market in a reasonable amount of time so that we can join the racing um, maybe not in 1963, but in one or two years after that. Yeah, interesting is where do we now market this? In general, Might Motors is about high budget, so maybe that's a good way to start. But we also should take a look at something that we can actually sell the car so that the demographics are large enough. So let's see. So with our current awareness, from the premium point of view, premium looks good, of course. Family premium, maybe family sport premium. Let's take a look at the budgets. Family sport 26.4, premium 26.5. So that's all good. Everybody needs a sedan. Everybody likes four seats. So maybe those are our two main demographics. And because we are aiming it at a more sporty market, maybe um, for now, let's choose family sport. As a body, I like this one very much. 2.9 meter version, we are still building huge or large cars. I tried it out earlier in Sandbox, it will come out at around 4.7 meters. So I think that's fine. Now question two doors or four doors. We're going into family. Let's make it a four door. That also fits more into the, we have comfortable rear seats and stuff, um, brand image. Then the bigger problem, um, it probably still needs aluminum panels because I definitely cannot yet afford a medium factory. Also, because we cannot afford a medium factory, it will definitely be ladder. So proper shit for racing. And also to separate it a bit more from the upper market models, we only give it semi-trailing arm rear suspension. Still independent, so it should be good, but let's just do that. And of course we need a new engine and instead of V12, we just choose half of V12 and make a new project. Let's aim for a 4 liter um, in line 6. Still, we'd go for push rods to keep it simple and quick, but advanced aluminium. So we have the highest familiarity in single barrel and I maybe stay with this one just to save engineering time. We need to be quick. And still this is not a very sporty model. We still have the premium intent. So that's my muffler setup I'm choosing. And then let's see where we are uh, getting at. Right, I had to quickly change everything to horsepower again. And uh, yeah, also to the basic design room just to make it consistent. We are currently at 150 horsepower, which is quite decent. And I'm overstressing the engine. Maybe the first version will not have all of the stroke and we'd rather go down to 3.6 liters maybe. I 
Yeah, I think standard settings are actually quite good here. Question is now, do I want to go for tubular headers or not? That would be nice for power and for the raceability. But I also think headers are free when you go racing. So, so you can adjust headers um, when you, um, according to the group two regulations, headers are possible to be changed. It's actually quite good. Engineering time 67, it says right here. We will see at the end how, where we actually land. And now it's actually time to name the car. And this one, uh, the model is called the Bramble. Time for some design magic again. And now the big question, um, gearbox probably needs to be manual, even though we are aiming for the um, premium market, but Family Sport should like it. Um, for racing we have to keep the gearbox, so let's choose the manual one. Diff will be open, we don't have the time and money to afford something more advanced. And it's not a proper race car, it, it still should represent the company. Also steering, I should probably go for hydraulic ball, even though it's bad. We'll see if we have to change it. Oh yeah, for now it's pretty bad because of low sportiness. We have to make it more sporty. Even premium doesn't like it. Um, but we didn't set up gearing yet, we didn't set up braking yet, so let's see. Yeah, the key is in the suspension. Um, if you make it a bit harder, comfort will suffer, but yeah, Family Sports does like it a lot more. Still cannot get it up to premium though. Premium probably needs a lot more um, comfort. So I guess I have to stick with Family Sport. 
but I, as, a, as you see in the suspension tab, this is not a sporty setup. So there's a mix between comfort and drivable. So it's still quite fine, I think. Okay, yeah, by choosing manual rack and pinion, I get all my sportiness back and comfort doesn't really suffer a lot, just 2.2 points. And then I have a proper, proper sporty car and everybody likes it, even muscle premium. Does this market already exist is the question. Yeah, small one. Yeah, I think I go with this. It's a bit more sporty than I thought, but I think it fits. Yeah, I think this is looking good, but it's Muscle Premium actually has a very nice budget. Let's see if we can sell it for around this price or a little bit higher. But first let's see how we can actually afford it. So 53 months is more than 4 years. I try to get it down to 3 years and also I need to cut the cost so it needs to be done quicker. If we can get it down to three years, we have one year to sell, to build 1,000 cars and we'll join the second season of racing. Don't want to sacrifice all the reliability. Something like this. 10 million is a lot though. Even worse here for the engine. And I need another engine contract. Or can I afford my own engine factory? That would be really nice. Oh, aluminium foundry. Uh, that pushes up the price. I cannot afford it yet. Stupidly expensive engine. If it's necessary, I will go back to cast iron. So if the margins are too low and if I cannot earn any money with it. And I also need another small factory, but maybe because this is somewhat the mass market model, but maybe I can put it onto a medium plot already definitely cannot afford a medium factory so let's see how much we can get out of a small one 278 per month that would be awesome that means i can meet the production goal so it says this one needs to needs 13 months to be built Yeah, it looks alright. Alright, this looks really good. So the factory is already too small. <laughs> um, let's see if I can afford this one. Okay, the sales price is also much too low. 22k minimum. Let's start with this. This should get us the loan, this is a really nice forecast. I can get all the loan I need at a very good rate as well. Five years should do it. I think I have enough money. I also don't need so much loan. Let's just take 50%. All right, there we are with the Bramble. I would say we wait with the new model. So the other one was a 54. I know it's quite old and it already gets a um, um, desirability penalty for the old body, but I will wait a bit longer until we start with the new with the new one 
but maybe we already start a little bit of marketing into the family sports direction. Right, we are almost out of stock of the old car, so now our profits are back to where they should be. And I also see I should invest a bit more in research, it's only, let's say, 10%. So let's do a bit more. Oh, I would really like to have the hydro pneumatic when we start with the new with the new model. So now we're basically out of stock. I'm selling off the remaining three cars. They sometimes don't like to be sold. So still looking healthy. I think I can still invest a bit more into marketing as well. Should I market reliability? Um, I think that's not a good idea as of now. Oh, we're already selling the Bramble. Excellent. Oh, I didn't check about um, staffing. I hope that works out. Now that I think about it, um, the loan amounts I could get were so high, I should have probably been more aggressive and built my own engine factory. But let's save that for the facelift. And there we will also create an, another variant of the Bramble, not just a sedan, but maybe also a coupe version and maybe a wagon version, we'll see. Um, yeah, let's pay attention to what's happening here. So the Grand Touring model is nicely requested. So we are definitely not able to sell all of the cars that we could. So let's produce a bit more. And we're still not able to meet the demand. So let's raise the prices. I know we're earning too much money now, but um, I'm just collecting it for building factories then. We will need a lot larger factories. All right, there we have it. The Bramble has entered the market and we already produced nothing. Let's let it run one more tick. Then we get our first batch of production. And we have produced and delivered 328. That means within three and three months and a little bit, we are able to deliver and build 1,000 cars, which is basically just in time for the racing season of 1963. I didn't expect that, but pretty nice. Um, I will make sure to nail down the production at 2.0 shifts because we are already fulfilling our pre-orders. And it might be that um, the factory will be turned down. So for all of these story reasons, I will put this to two. So to make sure that we get enough cars and then once we have them, we'll turn it down a notch. For now, for this episode, this was it. Um, I hope you like the new model we have brought to the market. And yeah, maybe next time we'll prepare a racing version of it, just for the fun of it. And then the new trim with new models and uh, we will also bring the new luxury car generation to the market. If you have liked the playthrough so far and haven't subscribed yet but still would like to be notified, please like, subscribe and I hope to see you all again next time. Thanks for watching, bye bye.